Hi everyone and welcome to Cooking with Cricket. Today I'm going to make some Sloppy Joes. And I got the inspiration and the idea for this recipe from my friend Rick over at Cooking with Rick. And I will link his video in this video and also in the description box below. So y'all go check out his video for his quick and easy Sloppy Joes. It looks awesome. And my husband really loves Sloppy Joes, but out of the can, that can mix, I just don't like it. So, I thought I'd give it a try to make some homemade. And that way, uh, we can eat it for dinner tonight, and then he can have some when he comes home from work tomorrow for his lunch. And everything. So, this is two pounds of ground beef that I'm going to um, brown up. And then once it gets browned, I will be back. While my ground beef is browning up, <clears throat> while my brown, <laughs> while my ground beef is frying up, look, looks gross, don't it? I took one small green bell pepper, one small onion, uh, a teaspoon of minced garlic, and one small jalapeno pepper out of my garden. And one small tomato out of my garden. You can leave out the jalapeno and the tomato. But I thought, you know, I have it. Why not? And I put it in my food processor to uh, grind it up. That's how we like it. We like to uh, really mince it up real fine. But you don't have to do that. That's just how we like it. That's how I kind of did things when my kids was little. They wouldn't even know it would be in there. And then they would eat it and like it. So that's what I'll be adding here in just a minute. All right, I have my ground beef browned up. Look at all that grease in there. So we're going to drain that. And then once I get it drained, I'll be back. All right, it's drained. So now I'm going to add my bell pepper and onion, jalapeno and tomato and garlic. Stir that around a little bit. If you just want to chop yours up, that's fine too. But we want to saute this for a little bit. For about a minute. See, you can still see it in there. But it's just not big old chunks. So I'm going to let this saute up. And I'm on like a medium, medium high heat. I'm going to let this saute up for about a minute. Alright, this has been going for about a minute. And I've stirred it around. And if you notice, and I notice every little thing in other videos and movies and stuff, I've changed spoons, our stirring spoons. Uh, this is just me, because the way I am about raw meat and contamination, uh, I was using my other one to uh, with the raw meat so once I get done with that I get a new one because sometimes the raw meat gets all stuck down in your spoon and stuff and I just swap them out that's just me and one of my little silly things so in my measuring cup I have three-fourths cup of ketchup one tablespoon of brown sugar. I did not pack the brown sugar, so it's not packed. And one tablespoon of uh, Worcestershire sauce. I can't say that. Gonna mix that up a little bit. And I thought the brown sugar would kind of. It's not going to sweeten it, but take off some of the uh, harshness or the acidity from the tomatoes. And now I'm going to add one 12 ounce um, jar of chili sauce. Give that a stir. I'm going to be adding half a cup of water and I'm just going to put it 
in here like Rick does so I can rinse out everything. Oops. Alright. Now I'm going to add a little bit of salt. And I use kosher salt. That's to your taste. <clears throat> and the black pepper is to your taste too. And if you know me, you know what comes next. Parsley flakes. About a half teaspoon. And then I also, if you know me, you know I'm going to be adding some paprika in here. About a half teaspoon. Gonna mix this up real good. Now I'm gonna turn my heat down to medium. Cover it. Actually, like a medium low. Cover it and let it simmer for a little bit, and then we'll be back. All right, this has been cooking covered for five minutes. I'm. I uncovered it. I'm going to leave it uncovered so some of the extra juice can evaporate. We don't want it all to evaporate. But uh, And I cut my heat back up to medium. And my son has come up here and tasted it. And he loves it. He said it's perfect. That it doesn't need anything. And he really likes it. So I'm going to let this to continue to cook for a little bit longer. And, you know, stir it every now and then. Make sure nothing sticks or anything. And we'll be back. All right, I've been letting this simmer for around 15 minutes. If it needs to simmer a little bit longer, then that's fine. But see, all the extra has done kind of evaporated out. And this almost looks like what you get in a can anyway. So I'm going to turn it off. And I'm going to let it cool down a little bit. I'm going to toast me up some buns. And then we'll try a bite. Oh my goodness, Mom. These, these sandwiches Don't are Don't so talk great. like that. Talk normal. Oh my goodness, these sandwiches are so great. And here are the finished... Uh, sloppy Joe's. I toast my buns. Got that one a little bit toasted, but that's all right. Now I'm going to try a bite. My son already loves them. Better than anything you can get out of a can. But uh, thanks, Rick, for the inspiration. I've never made uh, Sloppy Joe's before. And uh, I know I tweaked it and added a little bit more stuff. But um, this is good. This is real good. Now, y'all, please click the link and go check out Rick's Sloppy Joe version. He has two of them. So uh, go check them out and uh, subscribe to his channel. He has some great recipes. But um, I hope you enjoy.